Do you do anything well enough to be must-see TV? I submit to you, the answer is probably not. Most of us don't. Why? Because we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. But what did Bruce Lee say? I don't care about a person who can kick 10,000 different ways. I care about a person who's mastered one kick 10,000 times. I'm not saying you only have to do one thing. What I'm saying is that we're spreading out our gifts, spreading out our glory, spreading out our brilliance, spreading out our effort, spreading out our energy, spreading out our mind, spreading out too thin. And so we are not, we're not even a master of anything or a jack of anything. We're just a jack at everything. We're mediocre in most things. Ain't nobody, how many people's inboxes are getting flooded with, man, you got to do this for me. I got to have this from you. You got to do this. I know people in my life who I call, like if I need something done, I know who I'm calling. And guess what? That number is slim. Because there's not many people who perform at that level. Not many people are must-see TV. As a friend, as a father, as a husband, as a wife, as a woman, as a boy, a dog, a cat. Not many things are must-see TV. Not many things perform at a level where it is indisputable and undeniable they are that. Just not. So then what do we do? We hedge our bets trying to have 12 companies because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and you want multiple streams of income. Yeah, but you have multiple, you have 10 streams with two pennies in each. So having one stream with a dollar in it. It would take you less time and you'd be less worn out. But you justify your desire for wealth by how many things you can do. By how many things you're involved in. So now all you're doing is robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're trying to be wealthy, but you're robbing yourself of vitality and energy, happiness, health, success. Nobody can ever talk to you. Nobody can ever see you. You're always sick. You're always mad. You're always hurt. You're always tired. You're always grouchy. You're always too busy. It's always something. In closing, be must see TV. Narrow your bandwidth. Focus on something. You can. You have greatness in you, but not for everything and everyone everywhere all the time. Narrow your stuff. Focus on something. You have greatness in you. You have gifts that nobody else in the world has. Why do you need to do 12 things? You can't be 12 people. <laughs> you can't be 12 people. How did Jay-Z become Jay-Z? Rapping. How did Oprah become Oprah? Doing what she's doing. Or what she's done. How did Jordan become Jordan? How did Bezos become Bezos? How did all these people become the epitome in their field or the greatest in their field. They weren't doing, they didn't have, they had all their eggs in a basket. They didn't have in 50 different baskets. Now, once you got a bunch of eggs, you can put them in other baskets. But you can't put 12 eggs in 12 different baskets. You got one egg in each basket. You right. ain't got enough to feed yourself or any of them or anyone else in either of those, any of those baskets. But you showing me 12 baskets. What, what are we doing? Focus your stuff. There's only one you. Nobody can do what you do. Figure out who you are and you'll know what that is. No one can do what you do. There's no competition. If they can't look like you, walk like you, talk like you, how are they going to provide a service like you? So then how are you going to be in competition with them over your business any more than you could over what you look like or act like? How could they? How could that be? But trying to be like everybody with a thousand different streams, one egg and 12 baskets, you're nobody. Trying to be everything, you're nothing. You're spread out. It's like trying to hit somebody with your hand like that. All you're going to do is break all your fingers and they're going to think you just tapped them. Why are you poking me? You're not doing anything. You are, there's nothing like you. There's no one like you ever before, during, or after. You are the only you ever. You have something to offer that no one can match. No one can rival. Own that. Act like that. Think like that. And you'll start to see your own uniqueness in what you do and or how you do it. And you'll see that is the stream. There's only one consciousness doing a thousand different things. There's only one you. And you can do a lot of things, but only as you are. Stop trying to be so many different things. Be you. You is more than enough to be any and everything you want. If it wasn't, you wouldn't have come down here, so to speak. You wouldn't have come. You wouldn't have got a body and be like, I'm ready. You're enough. More than enough, but only as you are. So you need to know what that is. And you need to focus on what that is. And that's internal. It's not external. It's expressed externally, but it's internal. You are rewarded by God, by consciousness, by your awareness. You're rewarded for 
who you are. Humanity rewards you for what you do. Decide who you are. That determines and dictates what you do. All right. Questions, comments. Let's get it rolling. Okay. Good morning. Yes. Yeah, I'll say that because I want to get started back up. So where do I, I think the first thing I'm going to start is in reference to you are so right when you said you've already committed the act when you thought. You didn't even have to take action. Once you thought it in your mind, it's like you already did it because everything starts with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a bar for me. And then that's where I'm going to start. But yeah, I'm still processing everything. That okay. was um, a lot of good information. Like it was very deep, but so true and so simple at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. But it's true. Okay, that's all I have. Wonderful. And so to piggyback off what you say, act, thought is what inspires all action. So when people say when you when you pray to God, you have to actually take action. Yeah, but your action has to be inspired. And your action is always inspired by your thought. So if you don't have the proper thought or you're unwilling to change your thought from poverty to wealth, it doesn't matter what action you take, you're not going to become what you want. Because your action is inspired by your thought. So all action that when people say, oh, you got to take action. Yes, but it has to come from a certain train of thought. Otherwise, your action is meaningless and, use and useless. So that means you can only choose what you think. You don't choose the outcomes. The outcomes are inspired by what you think. So absolutely. Yes. Who's that? Who's next? Coach Lucky. Man. Oh, I know that boy. It's Justin, what's up with it? Why you just drop the hammer on us like that, man? Holy man. Jesus. <laughs> man, my only comment to that is that's a lot to chew on. That That's enough steak for the week right there. But no, exactly what you just verbalized. I was talking to a friend and just having that same kind of like realization that, man, it's like an information overload. And there's so many different things trying to grab our attention and so many different things. And it's like you begin to try to filter out the distractions versus what you're teaching us. What is it that I want to do? How do I want to live my life? And yeah, you just dropped the hammer. That's a, that, that was a whole Jesus. So to Justin's point for all of us, I think I've explained it. I don't remember if I explained it here, but I know I explained it several times this week. There's a difference between sight and vision. So when we're talking about what should I do or what should I not do, everything you're doing has to be, you want to have, what are you, what are you doing everything you're doing for? What is your vision? What is your end goal of what you want? Have you ever let a little kid dress themselves and they're wearing uh, uh, a, a turtleneck, a football helmet, some basketball shoes, and just a, a thousand different things. And you're like, what are you doing? Why are you wearing that? But the kid wears it because they don't have a vision. They just have sight. It means that everything they put on as an individual item, they did not think about how all this was going to go together. It's mm. not for an outcome of an end. It's that they can justify everything that they put on because my dad bought me this belt. Or I'm going to play football with Justin later, right? Jeremiah's going to put on his helmet and be like, yeah, my dad and I are going to the backyard. And then Cynthia says, not in your church clothes, you not. You're like, yeah, but mom, I want to look nice when I go out there. So every individual thing that we put on ourselves, we can justify because of who gave it to us, what we're going to do later, how much we like it. Oh, I couldn't wait to wear it. But when we put all those things on collectively, we realize like, oh, well, I can't go out here. I can't play in these shoes and this helmet, this tuxedo's too tight or whatever. And so then we realize that all the things we put on collectively that seem like such a great idea individually, when we try to make them all work together, it's a catastrophe. You realize a child dressed themselves because they only use, and a lot of times as in our minds, we're acting like children. We think that we can, because we can justify each individual action that we take, that is going to end up to a cumulative success. But only, but our, well, that can only happen if we start with the end in mind. I know I want to be this. So therefore, everything that I do works back from that because every decision that I make is in reference to this. It's not, 
I'm here and I'm just going to dress myself up and then look up and see if I made it. So we justify our attempt at success by all the individual things we do, not realizing that those individual things, we don't even necessarily end up to our end, our desired end. We have to work with a vision. A vision says, I'm going to work today. So it automatically eliminates certain clothes. It automatically eliminates when you wake up or when you go to sleep. It automatically eliminates where they're like everything shrinks when you have a vision. That's why it says in the book, for a lack of vision, my people perish. For a lack of your ability to see the end of what you want to be, your desire and see the end of that. That's why our, we perish, meaning we remain as we are. We die where we are. And when you have a vision, that determines, instructs, and informs your actions, what you wear, when you wake up, when you leave, everything is determined by your vision. If you don't have one, you'll be doing a series of individual moves that you can justify that still lead you to nothing. Nowhere. That's crazy. You just got inside of my head, Coach Lucky. Like, you just, wow. I've been thinking about a lot of this stuff that you're saying, but man... It's like we hold on to things and exactly like you said, oh, this, my mom gave me this. or my, And it, you can't walk outside with that. And just think about what we're walking around with. Just think about all the stuff we're walking around in life with, right? We're walking around with tutus on and crowns and walking around with gold chains on, helmets on. We're walking around with all kinds of stuff that's, do you see yourself? You look insane, right? <laughs> you look confused, but we justify ourselves by, but I was up and then I was over here. Then I'm in this group. Then I was on this chat. Then I'm in this meeting. Then I'm in this club. Then I was over here. And you hear people literally justify each individual action they make by how much effort they put into it, how many different things they did today. And everybody tell them they're out there balling. They're out there grinding. They're out there hungry. There's no sleep. There's no, yeah, but what, what you got? Okay, what you got? What you got? Nothing. You have nothing. Right, because there's no vision. None of your stuff adds up to anything because you're not being governed by vision. You're only being governed by sight and everything looks good on its own.